What's happening is you guys need to start thinking about what you can do from inside of your business to outside of your business. And you don't have to leave your business. You can always be a CrossFit gym. You can always be a personal trainer. But how can you diversify the value that you offer to people that goes beyond what they expect? How can you diversify the offer that you give to people to go beyond what they expect? Because if you can do that, then you don't have to worry about being in a position in the future that you could get shut down by something that's completely outside of your control very often. At Active Life, we believe that the healthcare clinic of the future is the gym. Everybody starts with the best case scenario in mind. Never sell anything to anybody who is not in the market for what you have. The only reason we work out is to create the opportunity to recover. And the healthcare provider of the future is the coach. And this is why you guys need to get paid well, because what you're doing is really, really hard work. What's up, guys? Larry Geyer here with another urgent and important episode of Turning Pro on the Active Life Podcast. I'm joined today by Dr. Sean Pastuch. What's up, everybody? How are you today? I'm good. So what I want to ask you to help all of these listeners better understand is there are people that are going nuts about not just what do I spend money on, but do I spend money at all? How do people start making financial decisions now? Yeah. So you're talking about because we're sitting in the middle of the uncertainty that is the coronavirus pandemic. Yes. Yeah. So what I will tell you uh, is- In case anyone didn't know that that was going on yet. <laughs> sure. It's happening. So what I will what I will tell you is this. I'm not the person who should be telling you, the proverbial you, what to do with your money. Because I don't know how much of it you have. I don't know how much of it you owe. And I don't know how much of it you need. What I can talk to you about is what I am doing with my money and what I would be doing with my money had I been in the position that I was in during Hurricane Sandy. Because that's what I did, right? It was, it was a different time. Can you walk us through how you even start thinking about where money should go, if at all, in a day like today? Yeah, I think that what happens, it's a great question. I think that what happens right away is most people go to, oh, money should go in my pocket and it should stay there. And that's, that's the best place for money to go. And so you, if I, if I had to guess where you're going with this and, and I could be wrong, the idea is that money shouldn't go anywhere to stay. What right? do you mean if, by if that? Money's going to a place to stay. That money isn't doing anything for you, right? Like, so if money's going to a bank account for savings that you intend to not do anything with long term. Mm -hmm. that's not going to start to pay you in the way that you would like. Well, I think that that comes down to giving people financial advice from a legitimate money manager kind of perspective. We're not going going that deep. That's not my thing. Sorry, guys. Don't worry about it. Sorry, guys. I don't have any stock tips for you. (laughs) Um, But no, but in a much more general sense, my belief is, you know, money's an interesting thing because the less of it that you have, the less of it you want to spend. And the less of it that you want to spend, the less of it you can make oftentimes. You know, so I'll tell you what I did during Hurricane Sandy because that's a time in my life when I frankly had just about nothing. And when Hurricane Sandy hit, I was forced out of my business, out of my home, out of my clinic. Like, I mean, if it made me money, it was dead. And if I was comfortable in it, it was trash. So I moved into my parents' basement with my wife and my dog during Hurricane Sandy. And we lived there for nine months. Was not awesome. But now, in that time, what I also did was I said, okay, what about my life do I want to be different when this is over? And there were a few things that I knew I wanted to be different. The first one was... My chiropractic clinic at the time was called Thrive Long Beach Chiropractic. Not a very versatile name. Meaning, that's a fucking clinic in a town. Right? So, I didn't want to stay a clinic in a town. I wanted to be bigger than a clinic in a town eventually. I didn't know how to do it yet, but I wanted to be different. So, so, uh, so, so if I could just pause there, stopping off point for everyone. The idea there is that 
that's way too fixed. There are way too many constraints on that. If anything else like this ever happens again. Yeah, screw it again. Right. Okay. So I said, okay. And I live in it. I mean, look, for, for most of us, like, don't worry about the pandemic happening again. You can't control it. I couldn't control another hurricane happening again, but I do live in a town where hurricanes hit. We live on a barrier island. What that basically means for those of you guys who don't understand, our island exists so the rest of Long Island doesn't get <laughs> fucked up. Okay. Like we, we step in front of the island and take the punch to the face. Mm -hmm. So what I did during that time, cause I, I, I don't want to drag this out for you guys. What I did during that time was I said, okay, what can I create that would be a scalable name? And what can I create that would be a scalable anywhere business? So the first thing I did was I created a company called flex events. Okay. Flex events, the idea of it was we were going to be like the next Wadapalooza, but for the everyday person and no elite athletes. I can tell you that didn't end fabulously for me, but it was a very cool and very worthwhile thing to pursue. So what I spent my money on during that time was getting the, the people in place to market the event, getting the equipment in place to hold, to house the event, getting the space in place to be able to have a spot to do it, right? All of these things, it was just spend the absolute minimum amount of money up front so that we could do the event for the first time. And then we would turn the profits into something else. And wildly enough, that was our most profitable event that we ever did. So the idea here was, all right, out of all the things I'm going to spend my money on now, it's going to be something that's going to be conducive to making money. Yeah. Conducive to making money and conducive to making money from anywhere in the world. So if a hurricane hits again, my equipment isn't going to be outside set up for the hurricane to take it away. Okay. It'll be dry somewhere. That's one step better than a clinic. Yeah. One step better, except it didn't work out for me, but that's okay. So the next thing I did was I was, I remember I was on dog, I was on a walk with my dog. I remember exactly where I was. I was walking northbound on Hewlett Avenue in Merrick behind Curie of Ars Church. And I thought about the idea that I didn't want to be called Thrive anymore. What if I called myself Active Life, or it was at the time it was the Active Life, and then underneath that it was chiropractic and soft tissue. And the Active Life, CrossFit Island Park. Right, it was active life athletics, CrossFit Island Park at the time. I'm like, that's it. Because active life becomes the brand name for me. And now it's like active life education services, active life, whatever. And it was just active life was the umbrella name and everything else went below it. So I spent money on hiring a graphic designer to build me a logo, hiring um, people to build out paperwork for me so that I had all of the appropriate trademarks in place. I did everything that was necessary to make sure that I owned the name active life. I had no idea what I was going to do with it, but I knew that I wanted to have something that was bigger than just Thrive Long Beach Chiropractic. And so, just so you guys understand, I didn't spend tens of thousands of dollars. I probably, all in all, spent like five grand of the 50, 100 that I had. And what was, what was the greatest intent that at that moment you were getting after? In doing all of that. Yeah, the greatest intent that I was getting after in that moment was I was going to have different opportunities after this was over. The reason why I'm asking this is because, let's be frank, not many people have the capacity to think the way you do to the scale that you do. So I want people to at least start understanding how to start thinking like you. Sure, and, and, that's, and that's what we're trying to give to people on the videos that I'm putting out every day and on the Zoom calls that we're doing every Wednesday. And what's happening is you guys need to start thinking about what you can do from inside of your business to outside of your business. And you don't have to leave your business. You can always be a CrossFit gym. You can always be a personal trainer. But how can you diversify the value that you offer to people that goes beyond what they expect? How can you diversify the offer that you give to people to go beyond what they expect? Because if you can do that, then you don't have to worry about being in a position in the future that you could get shut down by something that's completely outside of your control very often. Which means that you are more adaptable yeah. to any economic situation. And it also means that as long as what you're selling is actually decent, mm -hmm. you should be talking to as many people as you can help. Well, if you look at money as a vehicle, as opposed to something that you must have, money becomes the vehicle of opportunity. I had the opportunity to try an event. It didn't go well. Now I know I don't want to be an event guy anymore. I had the opportunity to try a new chiropractic clinic. Didn't go the way I wanted it to. I don't want to do chiropractic anymore. I had the opportunity to start a personal training business. I didn't like it. 
I stopped doing that. I had the opportunity to change the way I ran my gym. Didn't love the way I ran my gym. So there's so many things that money allowed me to do. And in every single one of those situations, I lost. But I didn't spend it on things that, you know, I didn't go out and buy. Now is not the time to go buy all of your product for the next month. Clearly, now is not the time to buy a bunch of yellow bananas. You know, like now is the time to invest your money in things that have the opportunity to either make you more money long term or provide you a different life when this thing is over. Those things include, but are not limited to education, experience. And when I say experience, obviously you can't go apprentice with somebody in person right now, but there are companies who are providing you with experiences online right now. Learn how to do the trade online right now. What can you spend your money on that allows you opportunities that right now you frankly just don't have? Shape the life in the time that you have right now. Spend this time wisely and shape the life that you want to live when it's over. Huge. Huge. And I think that, you know, it's very, very easy to be like, yeah, but I don't really have the business savvy to start thinking about that. And I think that we need to start thinking of every dollar not spent on that. Dude, I had none. I had zero business savvy. I have failed more businesses than most people have ever worked for. And and in doing so, you gain business savvy. But the, the, the bigger point that I want to make, and frankly, I think that you could tell me whether or not this is accurate or not, every dollar that you don't spend on something like that is opportunity cost. For sure. And and again, I want to be clear. Like if, if you have kids at home and you can't put food in their mouth, you need to put food in their mouth before you start spending money on other right. things. But eventually, you need to figure out how to do both. You know, I can't give you the advice of going out and taking out a small business loan for something. I, it's, it's it's illegal for me to do that. But where can you get money that, that would allow you to, you know, have opportunities in the future, have potential in the future? People are so afraid of debt. They're so afraid of debt because they've been told their entire life, don't take debt, don't take debt, don't take debt by somebody who has a fucking mortgage. Right. What are you talking about? Don't take debt. So the idea here then is for, for, for everyone who is not a business mogul, the idea is start moving in the direction of at least thinking about how you should be dedicating more of your dollars to things, experiences, or services that can make you money. Let me give you a really simple concept and then we'll wrap this thing up. Really simple concept. If you spent a thousand dollars on equipment and that equipment didn't change the way that you acquire new members or train new members in your gym to allow you to make more money. Then that equipment didn't do anything for you and you can't justify doing it again. That's an empty expense. Yes. It's, it's technically an asset, but it's depreciating every year. If you spent a thousand dollars on something that each month of the year paid you back $100, First of all, as you compare that to the stock market, that's insanity. Yeah, you'd be crushing. <laughs> you'd be Warren Buffett in no time. But if you just think about this, because people are afraid of taking debt, and I understand why. But if you took $1,000 debt at 20% annual interest, that means by the end of the year, you will have paid back $1,200 on your $1,000 loan. You following me? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then every month, the thing that you spent a thousand dollars up front on and had to pay $1,200 at the end of the year back on every month, that thing made you $100 at the end of one year, you will have made $1,200 off of the thousand that you spent, which means you'll break even $0 at the end of the year, January one, the following year, you're making a hundred dollars a month free and clear for the rest of your life. It's a big difference. Yes. So when people tell you don't take debt, avoid debt that doesn't have profit to it. Don't fear debt that is a profitable debt. That's how landlords make all their money. Landlords buy a building on debt and then charge you more than it costs them to pay the bank for it every month. They're just building a margin in. That's it on their debt. It's a valuable perspective. I just thought it'd be a valuable thing to drop in for people. Thank you. I appreciate that. I think, I think that you did a very, very good job of very, very clearly outlining the basic idea of how to start thinking. And I think this is something we'd expand upon. I think there are frankly much better resources than both of us for people to hear how to do this in depth, but Robert Kiyosaki is my favorite. Yes, mine too. 
um, I think it's a really good place to start. Thank mm-hmm. you for that. My pleasure. Turn pro, guys. All right, that's going to be a wrap for this episode of the Active Life Podcast. And guys, remember, remember, if you are looking to enhance your fitness business, if you're sitting there thinking, man, I would love to be able to go on vacations. I would love to be able to take two weeks off and not have my business fall apart. And most importantly, most importantly, if you want to be a part of the movement that we are creating, facilitating, and seeing come to life, which is coaches and gyms becoming the healthcare clinic of the future, helping people who've gotten hurt working out, helping people who've been told they have to work out around that, having people be told they're too old to do that, find new hobbies. If hearing things like that for your clients is frustrating for you and you want to learn the skills to solve those problems and also get paid very well to do it, head to activelifeprofessional.com and let's get talking. Till then turn pro.